Hi, this is Ash or Bash from the Flying Seagull Project. Uh, first part of Cirque de Samos has now come to its close and we've managed, as you can probably tell from the scenery behind me, to make our way back to England to, I guess, make the most of this incredible good fortune we have, which is to spend it with our families uh, a little bit at Christmas time. So we're going to be back for a short time, see our families, regroup, rebuild, get our energy back up and then we'll be heading straight back to Greece for Cirque de Samos part two. So it's time for a bit of a summary. Now I've been thinking over the last couple of days as we made our way home, how to describe what the last few months have been like. From a professional point of view, I have to say that I don't think in the 11 years, at least of the projects I've been involved with, the Seagulls, that I've ever been more proud or more convinced that what we were able to offer was of huge benefit, that the way we delivered it was respectful and dignified and honored the delicacy of the situation and of the people that took part. You know, we made sure that every kid who came to our big top, every single one, even if they were challenging, and trust me, we, we had some pretty challenging moments, um, but they knew that even though there were difficulties, that they were welcome. And even when they were struggling, we tried to make sure that we made a provision for that. So let's say an example, um, a couple of the kids found it really difficult to engage in more focused activity so we made sure there was other stuff that they, that they could do and other things other challenges they could succeed at and get that boost from so tight wire for example or a game called lemmings taught to us by by panic from panic circus is that you just climb a ladder and then jump onto a crash mat now i know it sounds silly but to find that when whoever you are and whatever mood you're in and whatever energy you're bringing for those kids will arrive and find that there's something for them there and a, an opportunity for us to congratulate them and to encourage them with with that energy that we try to deliver I mean to be honest that's really part of the the whole process it's not even about learning to juggle I don't care if they do or don't it's about creating an opportunity where they can try something feel challenged succeed and then get congratulated so with your help this year this last few months as I say professionally I don't think I've ever felt more um, more chuffed more convinced that we've got to just keep on doing this just get super determined on a personal level though I have to say this is a, this is a double-edged sword because yeah the project was great the, the organization of seagulls we're getting we're organized I mean we are on it we're really getting in where it counts and doing what we can but this is my fourth year now going to the islands. The last three were on Lesvos, this one Samos. And I'd like to be able to tell you that the situation's improved, that there are less kids than ever, that, that the living situations are much more um, comfortable or safe. And unfortunately, I'm not able to do that. I, the only thing I can report is that it's not, it's the opposite. You know, even in the height of this humanitarian refugee crisis back in, in when you saw the boats and all the press were covering the people arriving, there wasn't this many people. On, in Moria camp alone in Lesvos, there is an excess of, of, of 15 or I think it's even up to like 20,000 people now. 10,000 people live in tents that are meant for the summer right now. In Samos, in Vathi camp, where we were working just outside, it's called a hotspot, so it's like a crisis camp. There's now 7,200 or something uh, people living. And, and this was a camp meant for 750, which means that this is where I say it's a double-edged sword. Those kids had a wonderful time in our big top. They felt what they were supposed to feel, which was safe and welcome. And they knew that that, that belonged to them, that space. But then when the session's finished and we say, see you tomorrow, they go back and they sleep in a tent. And they're not sure if it's going to be safe because they're often an overflowing of tensions. In the past three days, for example, since we left, there have been non-stop clashes between desperate, scared and traumatised community members and the police who are desperately just trying to keep everybody safe. And that means tear gas gets flown around and, and the sound of violence and fights becomes a soundtrack to their childhood. And I say that in that dramatic way because I guess that's the final thought I want to share with you is this is why this being the fourth year is so difficult proud that we're able to go a fourth year in a row proud that we're able to take better provisions than ever before you know a big top outside a hot spot sharing cinema nights and discos and circus school is a wonderful thing it's rare and it's new and it's wonderful but these are their these are their childhoods this is where they're spending christmas 2019 whether they celebrate it or not you think back to when you were five or six or seven your neighborhood or uh your, your best mates or what you had for dinner and when there's trouble, sometimes there is no dinner or it's the grassroots NGOs handing out whatever they can find. So in between our play sessions, it's back to a, an unstable, unsafe and to be totally honest, um, 
inappropriate place that they're living. This seem, might seem like a strange message to send on Christmas Day, but I say it for this reason. We have done our absolute best. We really, I can't tell you, I know everyone says this about their own organisation, but we really work our absolute hardest. We use every scrap and drop of energy and determination we have to make sure we do our best. And every penny and every pound of your support over the last year, we've done everything we could have with. And I know that most of you have given us everything you could spare. But in spite of all of that, we've still got to do more. In the last year, let's say even longer, across Europe and especially at home in the UK, we've noticed, I'm sure we all have, and whichever side of the argument you're on, whatever view you happen to hold, is anyone happy with how divided we've become? Divided, uh, division and divide and blame and accusation seems to have become just a cultural norm for the modern day political landscape or societal landscape or even within our communities. And I think we need to find a way, I've said it in so many speeches and so many interviews before, but I'll say it again, beyond economics, beyond religion, beyond politics, we have got a world full of souls and hearts that belong to elderly, middle-aged, young adult, and even the most vulnerable, which is children. And those souls seek happiness and seek friendship and seek joy and seek purpose. And I think we, we must find back our, uh, our hearts and find back our way to the principle that every child deserves to have a childhood. And not all of us, I'm sure, can look back and find difficult moments, some unfortunately more than others, some less so. But I'm telling you, we cannot ignore or deny any further that there are childhoods taking place that aren't safe and they aren't happy and they aren't joyful. I mean, when you're a kid, when you're four, there should be at least glimmers of hope, at least moments where you feel confident, at least little sparkly uh, events or incidents or exchanges where, where, where it, it changes the way you feel and you, you, your imagination's fired and you play um, make-believe about the, the thing that you suddenly imagine being an astronaut or, or you had an uncle who took you to a show or, oh, I don't know. But it's got to be that we honour these children's right to experience these opening phases of their life with more than hardship, with more than difficulty, with more than uh, witnessing the stress and worry of their parents and the world around them. So here's my request. Next year, take a bit of time out. Let's have a winter. Let's have a Christmas. Eat some food. Love your family. Share time with whoever you're sharing time with. Realise how lucky we are to have that. Let that energy fill you with strength and power and then join us again in 2020 and we'll get back to changing the world as best as we can, one smile at a time with respect and with love, with empathy and with dignity. So anyway, there's, I'm going to go on and on if I don't stop them. I've got uh, my family waiting and I can't wait to see them and to spend a bit of time with them now I'm home. So from me, from our team, Benno, Wolfie and Bibi on the ground, from our team at the home in the office, uh, Sarita, Martin and Georgina, and from every single one of us seagulls who you've given the incredible opportunity to, to share our skills for the benefit of people who, who seem to really quite dig it. I want to say Merry Christmas. I love you. We love you. Thank you for your support. And uh, we'll catch up with you again next year. Well, take it easy.